we live in a society where much of our own feeling of self-worth uh, is tied up with the work that we do. But when an AI is able to do many of the tasks that we have practiced for years, like to get to the point where we become experts in it, we need to ask the question of what does it mean? What does it mean to thrive as a human being on this planet? And I want to like jump on to uh, Alice's point that, yeah, it makes sense. It's a little scary. Um, it is a little scary. But I think that there is uh, some some good hope. And to me that this is a this is the goal is to to scare, but also to to provide a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. So I hope I can I can do that next. But my answer would be yes, <laughs> it is scary, 100%. So let me show you what I mean. So my last point is, I'll make some room. Thriving in an AI world. So Kafka famously proclaimed that a book must be the axe for the frozen sea inside of us. A book must be the axe for the frozen sea that is inside of us. It must break through our barriers towards what our core, our deepest desires are. And I'm happy to say that AI Superpowers is a book that does just that at the end. Uh, Kai-Fu Lee talks about his experience with stage four lymphoma and how it fundamentally changed the priorities of his life. Oh, uh, Alice, really appreciate that. Uh, Alice says, uh, this is exactly why I love these webinars. <laughs> Thank you, Alice. <laughs> uh, so awesome. So it was in his struggles, Kai Fu Li's struggles, to write his own will, that he discovered that the things that were most important to him were not the people he was influencing. Like, he was a huge influencer. He said like 50 million followers on Weibo. Probably like he's the equivalent of Elon Musk on that platform. That's how many people he was influencing. Uh, but it was the very family that he had been neglecting in order to gain more influence. You know, he, he visited a Buddhist monk who asked him, Kai Fu Li, what is the purpose of your life? To which he quickly responded, because he knew this response. He's, he's been programming himself for this. He says, my purpose in life is to maximize my impact on the world. And the, the monk thought about his response. And he turned to him. And he said, are you impacting the world? Or are you impacting your own ego? Think about this deeply. And Kai-Fu Lee's story is a strong reminder to not neglect our social connections with each other. Like in the end, it's going to be our relationships that is going to create these movements that's going to lead to the society that we want the most. And so if we don't critically think about what we would like our society to be today, we are going to be subject to the society that the AI superpowers create for us. And AI is an inherently monopolistic technology since people's data always goes to the best solution. Why doesn't Bing work as, as good as Google? Data. They have, Google has far more data than Bing, and that is why it's, it's able to win. This data, and this like, let's call it like a, a data moat, 
makes it very difficult for others to compete, even if they have superior technology. And that means that AI is going to create this growing inequality, and a large portion of the population will not be able to earn enough income in order to make a living wage moving forward. Um, and I know that some proponents kind of say like, nah, come on, that there's no way that that's the case. Like we said the same thing. We said exactly the same thing when manufacturing first started. We said, oh, all the jobs for farmers is going to be gone. Um, there's going to be nothing. And uh, there's the famous um, uh, party led by Nick Ludd who would go in and the, to the factories and smash up the machines, uh, hence creating the, the term Luddites. Um, and so, yeah, like, why would it change? Like, why? That's not really going to happen, right? Um, I think it's important to realize that in this particular case, this isn't the purpose of it isn't to make your manufacturing quicker and to give you other positions. It's actually to like remove the number of people uh, that is needed. Uh, companies like Uber would love to get rid of all of their human drivers. We use humans, if you think about it, like humans in the loop right now for a lot of these systems is just because we, it's really hard for AI to do them or computers to do them, automation to do them right now. But if there was a way, then they, they would be all over that and then they, they would just get rid of them. So like Uber would make, make way more profit if they didn't have any actual drivers um, in the same way. Amazon, right, would have like they started off with uh, workers in the warehouses which are driving to the shelves and picking up stuff, putting them in boxes. And now those workers stay in one stationary place and then the shelves come to them uh, moved by robots. And Amazon would love nothing more than to get rid of that last stage of the, the person there and just have like a robot doing all the picking and, and moving and sorting and putting stuff into the boxes. And so it's different. Like there's a financial incentive. There's a strong financial incentive to get rid of workers as much as possible. And it may come to us, like the educators, the parents, the, uh, the people in society to say like, no, this isn't the so society that we want. We want to see some things changed. And, and that's why we're, we're doing the, the things that we're doing today is to give you some insights as to, well, what, what do we need to watch out for? We need to pay very close attention to growing inequality. This is getting worse. Um, it will continue to be worse, uh, not better. Um, things like bias that we've talked about, those are things that we need to worry about as a society because they are not going to have a profit incentive. Um, so what this means is you're not going to see any change um, unless it becomes really profitable for that company to make the change. And so you have to make it profitable for them, right? To say like, we need to change the law. And if you don't do this, you can't, uh, you can't operate in our country or in our jurisdiction. Um, so that's one way of doing it. But we need to, no matter what, we need to think about all of this differently. 